how to write a bad research paper. Assume you worked hard and you came up with a paper, a paper in computer science or actually in any scientific discipline, and you want to submit your paper to a conference or a journal. The paper will end up in the hand of what we call a reviewer. A reviewer is somebody who is considered an expert because he has or she has proven to be strong in the field of your paper. The expert is by definition a very busy person and you can actually help him or her in his or her task by writing a bad research paper. In that case, the reviewer will be very happy and will immediately reject your paper in very little time. I will give seven advices on how to make this reviewer happy. Of course, I will be stretching things a little bit and these advices should be taken with a grain of salt. The first advice is not to include any theorem nor any number in the paper. In this case, the task of the reviewer is very simple. In most of the cases, the reviewer will recommend to reject the paper, arguing that it is empty. And the argument is that either people do theory or they do experiment. They build systems or they experiment some assumptions. If they do theory, in most of the cases, a theorem is needed to convey something useful in the theory. If they do experiments, in general, there, there is need for numbers to convey the experiments. Not having any theorem nor any number typically helps the reviewer says that the paper is empty. Sometimes there is a framework, there are ideas, there are discussions, but it's easy for the reviewer to reject the paper. This was the first advice to help reject your paper. Now assume you have some theorem or you have some numbers. The second advice is to focus on solutions, only solutions. In this case, the task of the reviewer is easy. The reviewer rejects the paper by saying problem not defined. And this is very common. Sometimes there are great theorems or great experiments, but there is no description of the problem addressed by the theorem or by the experiment. And in fact, it would make it harder for the reviewer if you define a problem and you talk about its relevance. The notion of relevance is usually hard to define, but in a context, it basically says that other people have tried to solve the problem or the problem is important for this or that application. Now, assume you have a theorem or some numbers and you do define the problem that is addressed by your theorem or by your system and your numbers. It is still easy to make the reviewer happy by assuming that novelty is obvious. In this case, the reviewer rejects the paper by saying there is no novelty. And usually this doesn't actually say that the paper or the solution does not have any novelty. It actually says that the author did not highlight the novelty. So to make it harder for the reviewer to reject the paper, the author has to highlight what is new. There has to be the word new in the paper and explain what he, why this is new. And in that sense, the related work of a paper should be viewed as a friend of the author that describes what is new and how the paper is positioned with respect to other celebrated papers in the area. Now, assume you have a problem and you have a solution that has something new in it and you clearly say it in the paper. The reviewer can still reject the paper if you write all you have. In this very case, the paper is rejected and the usual argument is there is no focus. So what I mean by write all you have is that we solve problem X and then we solve problem Y and then we also prepare tea and we do coffee, etc. It is very important that one problem is highlighted and clearly discussed and addressed. Next advice is in the same vein. Tell your story. And many students actually follow this advice very well. They say, we woke up in the morning, we did this, and then we did that, and then later on we discovered that this didn't work, etc. So they basically tell their story. The reviewer has, again, an easy job by rejecting the paper with the argument irrelevant details. Of course, a story is important to convey a message of the paper, but this does not need to be your story. It has to be a clear message, but you don't need to say all what you did and all the chronological orders in which you did that. Another advice is the following. Write to your peers. This is easy to follow because when you write a paper, you typically write to people like you, and to some extent, this makes sense. In many cases, and for many reviewers, this makes them happy and they say that the paper should be rejected because it's narrow. So what happens is the following. 
In program committees or in editorial boards or whatever, there are typically many people who will review your papers. The probability that all of them know exactly your area is very small. Typically, out of five, one of them is probably your peer, somebody who knows exactly the same things or almost the same thing. The vast majority are people who have some knowledge about what you are doing, but very little knowledge. So if you write to your peer, you may get somebody with you to promote your paper, but the others will basically argue that the paper is too narrow and will reject your paper. So it's very important to make the task of the reviewer slightly harder is not to assume that people are your peers, which means explaining carefully the basic concepts underlying your problem and solution. And this does not mean to be vague or fuzzy. It means that you have to be incremental and pedagogical in your explanations. So now the last advice is an obvious one. Focus on the content. And this means you have to focus on your solution, on the problem, on the numbers, on the novelty, etc. And this usually means that you neglect the form of the paper. And the form of the paper means page limits, typos, English, references, style, etc. All these are typically used by reviewers to reject papers, simply arguing that they were written in a rush or they are premature. In general, reviewers have a bunch of papers, they divide them into category A, this is what they're going to reject immediately, and category B, this is what they will read more carefully. If the page limit or typos or English or references or style etc. are not carefully respected, the paper immediately ends up in the category A. It won't even be read. And obviously this would be sad if there are important problems addressed and solutions presented. So to conclude, these seven deadly sins are unfortunately responsible for rejecting many papers, sometimes potentially very good papers. So paying attention to them and to others that I probably uh, neglected is important when writing your paper.